everybody. Welcome back to Never Lose Your Nerd. I am Diana. I'm Brandon. Today the roles reversed. She wanted to do the intro, so I went ahead and let her be a good host. Uh, today we're going to do the movie review of the... Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep, yes. Which was a sequel to The Shining, which was made in 1980. And I guess right off the bat, uh, this is a spoiler review. For all of those that haven't watched the movie yet, yes. uh, just... Pause this video, turn it off, don't watch it if you don't want to be spoiled by any of the stuff that we're going to be saying. There's going to be some content that you might probably don't want to spoil, so don't, don't watch it. Yeah, of course, if you haven't seen the movie, unless you want to go spoiled into the movie, don't watch this video. And also, this is going to be for mature, more mature audiences. Usually, whenever we do the videos, it's for more adult content, so if there's any kids or anybody, just a forewarning. But if you are... Some of those people that like me that don't care to be spoiled, you can go ahead and watch this video. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. I, I try to avoid more stuff nowadays because I don't want usually, especially trailers nowadays, usually spoil well, the whole plot and all the twists and turns and everything. But yes, this does follow Danny, Danny Torrance, uh, played by Ewan McGregor, which he did a very good job. Uh, Follows him from the past, from when he was a kid up to when he was an adult. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we get started, I guess, what are your first impressions before we get too deep into all the details and everything? Um, I wasn't going with the big expectations. I mean, I saw some previews of the movie and I thought that it was pretty good. But you know, when, when a movie is a big hit like The Shining, it was a really good movie. You know, it's like a classic. Mm -hmm. um, and then they do a sequel. It's never the same. You know, there's some parts that it's not as good, you know, whenever they try to continue the Recreate. movie. Right. But this movie was pretty good. I think they did a pretty good job. Back whenever she told me it was coming out, I was like, I honestly didn't even know what the movie was about. And then I saw the previews and then it showed... It showed. Uh, I actually told you that it was a sequel from The Shining. That it was after what happened from The Shining. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I I didn't even know. No. That it was something to come out. Like I'm just saying, I didn't know that movie was coming out or what it was about until she told me about it. And I saw the previews and yeah, it showed flashbacks to The Shining. But yes, like I said, it does follow. Uh, it goes back in the beginning of the movie to back when he was a kid. It goes back to after the events of what happened at the hotel. Um, it shows him with his mom and well, actually the got a much prettier actress this time. <laughs> when it started, at the beginning of the movie, it started um, with Danny, which he's the main character. He was actually having, not a, it was a dream that he was back in the hotel and that's how everything started. It just does show Danny in the beginning when he's, uh, on his tricycle, right? And he's going down the hallways and everything. Well, he, yeah, the the dream that he was having, that yeah. he was back in the hotel. Yeah, and then it shows the old, nasty, old woman. God, that's so gross. <laughs> I think that's the part of the movie that haunts me the most, still. And, uh, yeah, it shows... Um, it shows Carl. Remember, he's on the bench with him. And then, come to find out, he shows him how to put the... How to put the monsters in the box and everything. And right. kind of shut them out in his... His imagination, kind of, but his... So they wouldn't be haunting him anymore? Yeah, not in his imagination. I think it's more... Because it's not an imagination that, that he's going through. It's actually... He can actually see no. those bad spirits. But he teach him... You know, he's like a guide. Or, Maybe he's more of a mentor. Like a mentor, yes. He's more like the mentor. Because, you know... Um, he actually met him... At the hotel, mm -hmm. and then he died, and you know they he stayed it with him, you know, yeah. like, like because he was a shiner too. Yeah, he would visit him every so often. To right, because he can like, uh, what's the word telepathically? Tele yeah, it's like telepathic they can, thing. Telepathic, they can talk, you know, with you know by mind to mind. Back in the old in the old movie, The Shining, like he was the first one to like communicate with him through his mind. It was like. You're not the only shiner out there. And that's kind of the first guy he met that kind of had his same powers. Well, Danny didn't know he was, that he couldn't do that. 
he just saw that he was odd. Yeah, that's why I was saying about kind of like an imagination or dream, because it did kind of, the way it would show us sometimes that they were dreaming, like they would wake up, like out of a dream, that's what it would make it seem like, you know, when they would see visions and they would like wake up. So it kind of made, made it look like some of them were dreams, but you didn't know for sure if they were dreams or they were actually seeing it. Seeing so. that stuff, yeah. Yeah, well, the beginning of the movie, I guess after we see the stuff with Danny growing up and everything, uh, we see the little girl, but she was the first Violet. victim. And then Violet, yeah, after the flower. And then we meet the uh, the evil lady, Rose the Hat. Uh, yeah, she ended yeah, up being pretty like, bad. Yeah, she is the main one. Oh, she's evil. I just called. I was like, is she a witch? I was like, I didn't know for sure what their powers were or what all went into it. But basically, yeah, they would find the people who were the, called the Shiners. They had, and they would eat their shining. Like, the Shiner is like, a, they're spatial, you know, like not like, they're spatial. They have a gift. Rose that had Rebecca Ferguson is the is actress's main, her real name. Oh yeah, well, Rose, um, she had the power of manipulate, I think, or I don't know. She make did. them make them do things that that she wanted. Yeah, I think that might have been part of it, but she could also like. Just find people. I don't know if that was her main power. Well, she had a bunch of them. Yeah, she had a lot of powers. That's why I just called her a witch because she had all kinds yeah. of. Yeah, pretty powers. much she was a witch. Pretty much all of them were witches. Yeah, none of nobody's powers were just well defined. Like you know exactly this to this to this. But the one girl who, with the guy in the theater, I guess she did put people to sleep. Yeah. I guess she was like luring in like pedophiles and stuff that were looking for young girls. So that was kind of creepy. She was mainly, you know, like, prating into, you know, like, uh, kind of like um, stop those predators, you know, and trying to look for little kids. So they will be ashamed of themselves. And, and every time they will, like, go and pray for a little kid, you know, like, they will get cut. Yeah, she would, like, cut them on the chin, cheek, like so they would... Be marked. She, yeah, she will make them like a like a snake bite. Yeah, that's what she said it was a snake bite. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, basically throughout the movie, like I said, that we it's these people that are like a. I, I thought of them more like a carny traveling, like not circus, but they were kind of like those kind of people. They're like freaks. Yeah, they just travel around and they're. There are uh, trucks and the RVs and trailers and just looking for people just to feed upon. And they also have all these canisters, which, like I said, you don't know in the beginning what they're doing with the canisters, eating the the uh, smoke or whatever, but that's actually the shine of other people oh, that the, they've killed. Oh, they're, or, they're, they're actually, all of them are little kids. They just feed from little kids because they're, like, innocent. Yeah. You know, they don't have any um, evil in them, so they're pure. That's even, that's what the rose. Well, I mean, she feed. did feed later on on, uh, on Danny. Yeah. Well, she even, she, even she said, you taste like whiskey. Like, yeah, alcohol or whatever, liquor. Yeah. Whiskey, yeah. And you taste greasy, she said. Yeah. So, you know, like, all his shine was not as fresh as the little kids. Yeah. Yeah, we're introduced to, uh, it's funny because her name was actually Abra, and then there was the Abracadabra. You know, she was the main, she ended up being one of the main focal points. She was the main, one of the main shiners that, she was actually, actually really powerful, the girl. Actually, her name is Debra. They just call her Abra. Are you sure? Because I wrote it down as Abra, like that yeah. was her name. No, her name was Debra. Okay, well, I guess I missed that. Like I said, I looked up, made sure I knew most of the cast and crew and all their, all their movie names and uh, Did names it say it's Abra? Yeah, it said Abra, and her, her real name is Kylie Curran. I hope I'm saying that right. Kylie is K-Y-L-I-E-G-H. Kylie, something like that. Kaylee, Kylie? Kaylee, Kylie Curran or something. I mean, you can look up if you want to, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it showed her name was Abra, so I think they did call her Abra a lot in the movie. No, I have to stop you there. I think that little girl did a pretty good job. 
Oh, she did a great and job. Her act, acting. And she did a really good job. Like she was fearless. Like you could all, you could tell she had a lot of confidence. Like she would go into the situation with like no fear and not be afraid. Her acting was perfect. Like, yeah. you know, like you can see, you watch some movies and you can sense that they either force it too much or they don't have that gift of for acting. You know, they're just not good. You can tell that they're acting, but you could with this little kid, with this little girl, she was pretty good. She yeah, did she a was really good. Job. good. Yeah, that's why I'm hoping. Uh, I guess getting too far, but I hope they do another sequel with her. It was and, open. It, it ended up open for yeah. another sequel. Yeah, the way it ended, they did it leave it open. But yeah, like I said, she's a really good actress, especially for a little kid, and hopefully. Hopefully they will do a sequel with her. You know, following her, then you'll have uh, you and McGregor, you and McGregor. You know, being her little her her, her mentor, her ghost, her mentor. Just like um, what was his name? Uh, Carl. Carl was yeah. Danny's mentor. Yeah, and but then the funny thing is, let's go back to the movie. Um, is how she tracked him. You know, like he's like in a really bad place at the beginning. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a drug addict. He's an alcoholic, and you know, he's just going through a really rough path. And you know, he's like with this girl, and he's doing drugs with her, going out and drink. You know, he's just like in, in a really bad place. Yeah. And then you know. Um, at one point, you know, like he got up and this is exactly when he started changing the path. His path is when Carl appeared, you know, he shows up, I guess, because he's, he's not, he's not sober, but he's in that point that he's not as drunk and, uh, you know, all high from the drug. So he can see Carl when he's trying to steal the girl's money. Yeah. And he gets up and then he's like so scared, you know, like what the fuck? And the girl was like, mm -hmm. she had puke on her bed and everything. Okay, well, going back to that, I think in that moment, the girl was already dead. She might have been, and yeah, it was a really sad moment when you. She freaking like, brought no, her. Like, no, don't start saying other stuff. We, we will get to that. But the point is that he got up, he didn't even check on her and see if she was alive or not. You know, but I think she was probably already dead. She probably overdosed. That's why she threw up. You know, that's why she was like, she she had vomit on the bed. And then whenever the little girl came up, you know, he didn't realize that there was a baby in there or the girl had a baby. Yeah. You know, when he saw the baby, he was like, oh my gosh, you know, kind of like surprised. Yeah. And then he like, he pick up the baby, you know, he give him... <laughs> Some of those like Rixies or whatever chips and put her back in the bed. Was it a girl or a boy? It was a little girl, but it was so sad. I, I literally wanted to cry, you know? Anyways, and then it's when Carl shows up because he was like going through her wallet, you know, mm -hmm. trying to steal the money. And then he's like, not to, Carl's like, don't do that, you know? And he's like, well, she took my money, you know, and she probably bought, bought the coke with it, yeah. you know. And then Carter was like, she has a baby, you know, she has a little kid. Yeah. And then he looked back and, you know, he put the money back and he left. After that, all that happened, you know, he was kind of running away, trying to get more away from his problem. He ended up getting off the bus. Like I said, he was just going multiple places. You showed him at. They showed him like under a bridge and yeah, riding the bus just, and then uh, he had happened in this one, the town he was in, and then he met Billy, who ended up being like his best friend for. Soon as he got out of the bus, soon as he got out of the bus, he saw him, you know, and it's like, it, it is funny because. No, he didn't see him when he first got off. He, he started walking and then he saw the little, uh, the little city. Yeah. Town. And he I guess was the, looking at it. The kids were building. But it's funny because it was kind of like meant to, for this to happen, like something was calling him because Abra wasn't there in that city. 
in Memphis. Yeah. And that's how she she tracked him. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was all meant to be. It yeah. all lined up. But, yeah. well, because that happened eight years. Remember, after everything that happened, he met him. They started going to the rehab AA. And he cleaned up. Really. Yeah, he really helped him out. Got him a hotel. Not a hotel, but the apartment. Yeah. And actually paid for his first two weeks. It was like a weekly thing for his uh, rent. And, uh, like I said, we ended up jumping forward eight years. And, uh, yeah, that's when we started seeing... Started showing Abra a little bit, and then on his wall and his. No, but we his... saw Abra before, you know, like when she was little. Remember, she was in her birthday and party. Her birthday party, okay. Yeah. And then the clown was doing all these stuff with the spoons, you know, and she's like, "I can do that." Yeah. You know, and That's the cool. and the clown was like, "Okay, kid, yeah, okay," <laughs> yeah. you know, kind of like like she wasn't surprised because mm-hmm. she could do that. And then the parents, the, actually the dad was inside. And you know how he freaked out when he saw all those spoons in the, in the ceiling. Yeah. And then, you know, she walked in. And then, you know, the parents looked at her weird. Well, I like think she was like, abracadabra. Yeah. And then, you know, everything just fell down. And the yeah. parents just looked at her weird. And the, she, she kind of like was like, you know... Like, her parents didn't accept her. So, since that point then, you know, from that point, she never told her parents, you know, what actually she could do. Because they were, like, freaked out. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it would show, it would show Danny in his, in his, uh, in his apartment. And then it showed the wall. Which, you know, after a few minutes, I started to connect the dots. Because they kept showing him the wall, the writing. He would write on it. They would have stuff, a response. And then it would show the girl. So it was like, I finally figured out. I was like, I think it's the girl he's communicating with. At the beginning, it started, she write it down. Because she tracked him. She's the one who tracked him. But she didn't know that he was actually a person. She thought that she was communicating with, with like a, like a spirit. Yeah, I don't know. And then she wrote hello. That's the first thing she wrote. Yeah. And the chalkboard. And then, you know, he was not scared because, I mean, he used to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, so he was he, very nonchalant about it. Right. Oh, somebody's writing on my wall. Let me let me write a response and they're, they're going to write back. <laughs> and then um, another thing is when he started working in that hospital. Was it a hospital or was it like a... Um, yeah, it was uh, what they call a hospice where people were going... Kind of their last days. Just a place to be comfortable, you know, in their last months or years or something like that, you know. It's more like a like a senior house. Yeah, they probably 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 the people there don't have a lot of family or maybe people have dumped them there or probably don't have a lot of friends, maybe they're just there to live out their last days, you know. Right. Cause even the guy was asking him who gave him the job that he met at the rehab was like, Do you mind being around dead people? And he was like, No, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That was obviously a place where those people just came, live out their days and die. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, there's the cat and the cat obviously mm-hmm. know when, when they're going to die. The cat's they never shiny. said Yeah, but they never say anything else about the cat. So, I think the cat, there's something in the cat, you know, that can sense when the poor old people is about to die. Yeah, that was weird with the cat. I said the cat's a shiner, I guess. He knows when people people are gonna go. The one guy was like, "No, the cat knows I've been here yeah. for a while, and the cat is never wrong." He's like, "Well, I guess it's my turn now." Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, that's why how they called him the Doctor mm-hmm. Slip Sleep. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, that's how it become his name, Doctor Sleep, because the old the old man was like. Oh, you're the doctor. He's like, no, I am not a doctor. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yes, you are. And then, um, the actually, the old man is a shiner too, because he can, he could talk to him through the mind. Yeah, I guess just sitting here right now, I don't exactly, I didn't remember that part. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think the old man was a shining because that he can kind, of, he can tell it talk to the, the old man and he calmed him down because he was like 
Not like having anxiety about dying. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do because, uh, yeah, he was like, well, thank you for that, Doc. Mm -hmm. I needed that or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he kind of like talked to him. And then uh, after that, you know, he died. So, but he, he's the first person who called him that he was the doctor sleep because he yeah. put him to sleep and, you know, he kind of helped him to calm, calm him down. Actually, when I was watching the movie, I thought the girl was going to be Dr. Sleep because remember she was, when she was in the theater, she was like sleep, sleep, telling people to sleep. I was like, well, maybe somehow she's going to be like a major part of this movie and she's going to be Dr. Sleep. But that was in the very beginning. But it yeah. ended up not being her. But yeah, she ended up being evil. That was kind of that was kind of something that I was kind of in the beginning. I was wondering, is she gonna be like a main character, Doctor Sleep? Maybe it's gonna be her. I don't know. Yeah, no. Um, Rose the Hat is mm -hmm. the one who took her and yeah. kind of brainwashed her to became become one of them. And I guess to become one of them, they have to die and. Revive? Is that how you say it? Yeah, I don't know. It never fully explained but they, she the said, ritual. But she said it hurts so much mm -hmm. whenever that happened, the ritual. She said it hurts so much that it feels like I was dying. Yeah. And she said, oh, honey, you did. Yeah. So she did die. And yeah, then maybe. she revived. It's kind of like a, like, a, like a second life. Anyways. But kind of like in uh, Game of Thrones, the uh, what does dead men ever die? Right. <laughs> well, going back with Billy and his friend, I guess that's not a good thing, but uh, trying to get through this. And whenever they they met the kid, uh, what kid? That was that was kind of a hard part to get through, right? Where they uh, they ended up finding the kid playing baseball and and torturing him. I think the biggest disclaimer about this movie is don't let your walk, kids walk home. Who the hell <laughs> let the kids walk home by themselves? I, I mean, will never let my kid. He's 13 and I, will, I, don't, I don't. I mean, the first girl, the mom just lets her walk off. I want to go pick flowers. Who lets their little girl just walk off to pick flowers? And then this kid is walking home from a baseball game and that freaking road was, what, 20 miles long and this kid is just walking by himself? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know it's a movie, but... Still. Well, Violet, this was in the 80s. And supposedly the 80s wasn't that bad as right now. I don't know. Just But, yeah. Times has changed. Please, parents, pay attention to your kids. Don't, don't, you know. I think times were probably worse. It's just we just know more now because of technology. But that was back when serial killers, I mean, serial killers were around back then. We really don't have serial killers nowadays no, like we, we used know. to because back then it was so much easier to get away with a crime because there wasn't all this dna and as much as we know now with cameras everywhere and it's a lot harder to get away with the crime now than it was back then so main thing is do not let your kids walk by themselves yes <laughs> especially if there's no houses nothing surrounded it's just like just freaking cornfields and dirt yeah nobody's gonna hear the freaking kids yelling for help it was just really sad that scene and it was a pretty long scene and the yeah. way that they make the, the, these boys suffer i don't even want to go into more detail because i have kids and i would it just it, it literally broke my heart yeah yeah it was pretty hard to watch and i i do think that that scene it dragged on pretty long like i was like when is this gonna end this is getting pretty pretty hard to watch like i said they got off on they ate their fear and their agony. And, That's what uh, they feed on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fear, pain, agony. Um, but they can only feed off other shiners. Yeah. People that shine. Yeah. People that have like the gift. The gift, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, going through the movie a little bit, we see a lot of battles with the... With uh, Rose, but Rose the hat. But you're missing when Abra appears. This is like the big... Thing where Abra shows up because she, whenever they're hurting the kid or they're yeah. doing whatever they're doing, she sensed it. Abra sensed it and not sensed it. She actually dream it. It is not a dream. It's actually that she's 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 literally watching. She's she sees everything. 
She sees it how they're killing the poor boy. And she starts screaming and she say, leave him alone. Wasn't it? Was it leave him alone or stop? No, she was saying stop or leave him alone. Yeah, because uh, Rose ended up seeing her. Like she felt her and then she actually saw her watching them. No, she didn't see her there. She only heard her. And she even told the crow. She said, I sent someone. We have a watcher. Oh, I thought she saw her. No, she said, she even said, I sent someone mm -hmm. and she is a watcher. Okay, yeah, because. And it's a watcher. She didn't say she, he, she said, it's a watcher. Yeah, because the girl was getting like dreams and she was sensing it. Like I said, she saw the glove and at one point showed her in the van. Like she was seeing who the people were and kind of seeing where they were driving. And that's why she was able to tell, she was able to tell Danny exactly where they were. It's like she's so powerful. She has such a big gift that they, they were just want to get her. Yeah. She had the, the gift of, uh, what's it called? Tr travel? Is it like, um, what was that movie that we watched? Is it time traveler? No time. Yeah, she can time traveler because she can, she could go back whenever uh, yeah. the other guy put the glove and everything. Yeah, she can time travel just like in spirit or in their mind. Uh, she can actually get in someone's mind or yeah. can you know kind of like play with their mind. You know, appear that she's there, but it's she's it's not actually her. Kind of thing. Yeah, because at the one point she was in Rose's like head, like she was like, she "Oh, in. you should see mine." It's like it was like so much, so much information. It was like a big vault and all kinds of, I guess, in her brain, like all the storage, I guess, right, kind of like a computer, right? Because Rose thought that she could, you know, beat her, you know, and, and just the way that she got in Abra's mind. But she tricked her into getting to her mind right. so she will be able to hurt her. Yeah. And get her in her mind to see what she had in her mind. And that's how Abra was able to see everything and succeed in all the stuff that, you know, like, um, to get to everybody. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, kind of going back whenever Abra uh, tracked down Danny and uh, she was like, Trying to get him to help. Like, I found this boy. I saw this. That uh, this boy was killed. And they ate him. And then he was like, you know, just leave it alone. Because they're going to end up coming finding you. Don't don't uh, provoke them. Right. And just, then, yeah. Just put your head down and don't. You know, don't shine. Don't shine. <laughs> and then that's when Carl appeared to him for the last time. And was like telling him to help that girl. I did this for you. Now you need to return Return it and do this for somebody else and help them. Right. Yeah. And then whenever Carl shows up like that, um, you know, he was asleep, Danny. Then. And there's the scene when the girl that he was in the past, in the past, remember? With the little girl. It appears that she was dead. And the little baby girl was dead with oh. her. Yeah, I And then so. she was telling... She was telling Dan that she, she's she told him you let you know you got up and left. Did and she say you let me die? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't remember if she said that, but she did said they haven't found us. That nobody had found them. That's why she was like, I guess looking for help mm -hmm. from him because they haven't found her. Yeah, I don't that's remember what specifically she was what they said. She said, they haven't found us. And then the little baby girl, because he saw the girl, you know, she was like full of flies. And then he didn't realize that the baby was there until the baby turns around and said, Mama. It was so okay, sad. Okay, let's move on from that. <laughs> Anyways, it was so sad. Yeah, it was pretty sad. They had a lot of stuff with kids in here that was kind of uncomfortable to watch. I mean, people that don't have kids probably doesn't have that remorse inside them, you know. But for us that we have kids, it's it's kind of hard, you yeah. know. Oh, even if you don't have kids, if you don't have any remorse, you don't have a heart. Yeah, exactly. And then it shows whenever Danny got with Albert, you know, he had talked to Carl for the last time, and then. 
he was gonna go help her. And was that whenever he showed up at their house? No. Right? Okay. No, because she was talking to him and then he told her, uh, you need to talk to your parents and yeah. tell them what's going on. And then it's when he showed up and then, you know, uh, the dad was so mad and yeah, the dad was going to attack him, and then the girl was like, Show him. Stop and kind of like pushed him with her mind, with right? Her mind, yeah. And then she literally showed him everything that happened to that boy. Yeah, exactly what, what she should do. Right. But yeah, kind of fast forwarding a little bit. Um, yeah, Danny and Billy, you know, went to find the kid, and then while they were gone, uh, the guy actually ended up coming to, and kidnapped her and killed her father. and they took they yeah. the crow took her yeah in but in all her. that and all that um danny and B billy yes were in the park where they have the uh, the rest of the the rest of the group to to uh track them you know it was like a ambush ambush Did, am i saying that right well i uh that's that's after that's after they uh, found the went and uh, dug up the kid though, right? Yeah, that's after. Yeah, that, that's what I was trying to get to. Is you know they went to find the kid first, unburied him, and then they brought the glove back. Yeah. Okay. Well, that happened. Okay. When they brought the glove back, they kidnapped her after that. Okay. Yeah. That was my mistake. I got it out of order. Yeah, they brought the glove back, and then they had the girl track him, and that's when they went to set up the ambush in the park. And then while they were doing that and killing all the people, that's when the guy kidnapped the girl at the house. Yeah, because okay. I got him. Yeah, because even even uh, Rose told told um, told the crow, you need to be careful because yeah. she has tricks. And then he said, I have my own tricks. Yeah, I have some tricks too. So that's the trick that he was meant to. Yeah, yeah, but they ended up killing all the other people except for uh, him and then the girl. And it's so. funny because Rose felt. Every single one that it was every dying. single death, yeah. And I guess it's because she had to turn everybody into what they were. Yeah, maybe. And then before that, it showed that the old guy had died, the tall, tall, ugly guy. He was <laughs> actually in the Allen family, you know, like the old one. You know what I was thinking too is, he, was he in the Haunting of Hill House? Was he the guy yes, the with tall, the hat mm -hmm. that kind of hovered? Mm hmm. That's another show that's coming back for season two. Season two. Wait we'll for definitely it. do reviews on that. Yes, for sure. That's a cool show. And uh, yes, he was in the uh, Family Adams and the two of them back in the 90s, I think. Those. Adams family? Yeah. Yeah, he looked familiar. I was thinking he was in the, the Hill House. The he house was, show yeah, he was. Okay. And, and he was in this movie too. And um, Yeah, he died. It was horrible how he was like dying. Oh. And these people have lived for years, supposedly, because yeah. they just feed from people, from yeah. little kids. Yeah, because uh, she was saying that you were there with something with Rome and this and that, and you fed on kings and stuff. I was like, yeah, so he's been around for a while. Yeah, <laughs> it was time for him to die. Yeah, they have to eat and feed to stay alive. That's why they keep all those canisters in case they need backup food. Yeah. And and it was it was it was um, it was so weird when Rose start literally just you know start soaking on all those canisters so she will go and get revenge from everybody. Yeah, but before that is whenever yeah. whenever Abra killed the other guy, which the crow. which was pretty cool how they did it. Like she was uh she was in there. He had tranquilized her enough to she couldn't use her powers. And then Danny showed up, you know, with his, with his powers and kind of uh, got into her and he was talking to him. And then he was like, that's why you're not wearing your seatbelt because you're so cocky and full of yourself and you're so confident. You that's, think that you're not going to die? Yeah, that's when he slammed into the tree and died. Yeah. yeah, and he killed himself. So that yeah. was pretty much he was, um, you know, like playing with his mind. Yeah. Yeah, and and it was funny because um, <laughs> I think it was funny how he started talking. 
Holy S H I T. No. I haven't feel this way in a long time. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm hangover. Like I'm drunk or something. Right. Like he's hangover. But it was it was funny how because you know it was actually the little girl yeah. body, but it was Dan. Yeah. Like soul in her, yeah. or he was the one who was talking. Mm -hmm. It was just hilarious, and then uh, the crow noticed it. You know, for a minute he was like, "Yeah, you know, like talking," because he didn't know until after when he started saying, you know, all these stuff that back then when he was drinking and all that stuff. But he was like, "You know, this is not her." Yeah, because I mean, her language changed in the way she was talking, and then he was like, "So who am I talking to?" And nice to mm -hmm. meet you, and all that. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, "I'm the one who killed all your friends." Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they so. sure did. But it was sad whenever the the girl made made uh the name Billy kill himself. Yeah. That was kind of sad. I know. It's like kill yourself, and he just. That was sad. I mean, I wasn't expecting that. No. I, I was not really expecting for that. Because he was like, don't get too close. And that's yeah. what she did. Because he was like going to see, you know. He was curious. And that's what happened. When See, that's another thing. Don't get too curious. And go to things that you know is going to be bad. Yeah. Well, going after that is whenever... I don't remember exactly. How did they get back together is whenever they went to the uh, house, the hotel. Uh, Dan went and looked for her. You don't remember? He just went and found her, right? No, he drew. He drove, and then I guess they telepathically were. She was guiding him where, mm -hmm. so he got to a hotel, kind of like a motel oh, thing, and she was like sitting, you know, hiding, and that's when she ran to him, and they got in the car. Okay. And took her to the. Yeah, because I couldn't remember exactly how they went back up, but yeah. Uh, yeah, they met back up, and he was like, I need to take you to the place that, you know, he's been avoiding forever. He ran away from the Overlook Hotel, Colorado. They literally drove, what, two or three days? Yeah. And the girl was tracking them. And then we get to the, yeah, the ultimate climax, whenever he goes in, he's like, I need to go wake it up. And yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. He's walking, and all the lights were going off, and, and all that stuff. And they were waiting for uh, Rose to show up. Yeah. And it was it was sad how you know I know he had his trick under his sleeve. I don't know if he already had that in mind that he was gonna literally wake everybody up from all the boxes that he had. Well, I think that was his last last resort because otherwise she was gonna kill him. So he had to do something. Yeah, this because uh, Rose was taking all of his shine. Yeah, because she cut him and then she was. Getting him, you know, the the pain was making the shine go out of him. And she yeah. was feeding on it. And then whenever, you know, he ended up, you know, bringing everybody out, they took Rose down. And then they came back to him. And I think because he was so weak after what Rose was doing to him, I don't think he was able to open the boxes and put everybody in. And that's when everybody started. Well, because I Taking think, him. yeah, well, because he wasn't fully dead. Maybe that's why, because he wasn't fully alive either, because remember after that, he was chasing the girl with the axe and his eye was all messed up. So he probably couldn't because they had attacked him and then he wasn't fully himself. So he couldn't put them all back in the Well, because boxes. he was weak, because he yeah. was dying. Yeah. And then these, the you know, the bad, ugly stuff yeah. took him or were taking him. Yeah. So he was like half dead and half alive, yeah. kind of pretty much, you know, kind of like in the last breath. And that's whenever he was uh, running with the axe, uh, looking for Abra to kill her. Kind of like the same thing that the dad did in The Shining, in the movie. Yeah, because it even showed like uh, when he was walking through the house and... He went to the bar. He actually went to that room where his dad was... Breaking down the door, it showed the holes where the axe had hit it and everything. Yeah. And where it says the red room. Red room, but it was actually it's murder. Murder backwards. And uh, yeah, whenever he went to the bar, which that was actually supposed to be his dad. What was the name? What was his name? The actor from The Shining. It was uh, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, I like him. 
Anyways, I think they should have put him in the movie and just you know how they make those that Maybe they make him too. yeah they make him younger. Maybe he, yeah, I was wondering that too. Maybe he didn't want to be in the movie. I don't know. That was kind of weird that they 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 recasted him as somebody else. Which like I said, they did the mom too, which. The mom did a pretty sure good job. She, I'm sure she was. She might be dead for all I know. I, I haven't checked up on the old actress, but. Oh, she was hideous. Yeah, she was very ugly. I'm glad they. I'm actually, so sorry. They put if her. She's not alive. If she's alive, I'm sorry, but she, she. She was not very good. I didn't think she was a good actress either in the the old movie. Well, I think all honey, pretty much all the movies are kind of corny, and yeah. that thing is not as good as now. I know they are, but I really didn't like the mom that much. Like I said, she was she wasn't very easy to look at, and I didn't think her acting was very good at all. But yeah, I understand for back in those times, it wasn't the best acting, but still. But you can tell that she was acting. Yeah, it wasn't very good to me. Yeah, and uh, but my thing, my thought is they should have put him in the movie, you know, like cast him, had him. Yeah. Like the original person. But, I mean, honestly, I didn't think he looked like him. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta spin disbelief reality that, no, that's not him. But, I mean, they did an okay job with the actor, I think. And honestly, I don't think he was, like, acting like Jack Nicholson either. He didn't have that, like, you know, how he was acting all maniac and, you know, how <laughs> how he had those eyes and he makes, like, the, kind of like the psycho eyes when he goes like this. Yeah, well, I think that was supposed to be, like, before he really went cuckoo because what he was mainly trying to do was get him a drink and he basically was just telling him that's how he coped with his It was his problems. medicine. His and, medicine, just yeah. blaming everything on his wife and his kid, all his problems. That's why he was always. That's drinking. why he was always drinking, because because of the kid and because of his. I think that was kind of, you know, wrong. Well, you have to understand, this is an alcoholic person. Obviously, yeah. you know, they're gonna, you know, put the blame on someone else, not on them find excuses for why they're doing it. Right. It's not it's not my fault. It's it's, it's my wife and my because kids of you or because you know you're you're B or because you know you nag a lot. You know, they just try to make up excuses to, you know, why they're doing the stuff that they're doing. Yeah. I mean which is kinda of understandable. You know, they're sick. It's not they're not themselves anymore. It's kinda of like the sickness take over. Yeah, come to find out he was really sick. Very crazy. Yeah. But yeah, basically getting through it, uh, like I said, we see whenever he eventually kills himself at the end, sacrifices himself to burn down the house after uh, after Rose was dead. And uh, he got the girl out, told her to run. She she got out of the house is whenever we saw the house burn down. And, yeah, everything. It was yeah. like, it can't, it can't I guess because it was an old hotel, you know, Very it catch on fire yeah. really, really fast. Because that just thing, like, oh, like it, it just went like, well, bam, everything yeah. was on fire inside. Yeah. And um, I just thought that he was not going to die, though. And I think, you know, like, I didn't think he was going to die in the movie. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah, I, not going into it, but at that point, yeah. No, really I know, good. but I mean... Since he was like the main character, well, you know, I mean, I he, think, or maybe he was, what? Well, I mean, he is not technically still alive, but he still will be around. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because, I mean, even at the end of the movie, the way that he, the way that she was talking, it seems like she was talking maybe like to the police or something like that, you know, that make it think because they were showing anybody else, she was just talking. And saying, you know, I didn't know. Oh, well, actually, I thought, yeah, I actually thought that he was talking to him. She was talking to him. But him alive, not his spirit. Yeah. You know, because the way that she was saying, you know, I didn't think you're going to, I didn't think you were going to make it. 
out of that place. Yeah, but everything I, catch up on fire so fast. Yeah, I just think it was a foreshadowing in the uh, before whenever Carl was telling him you need to pay it forward, do the same as I'm doing for you. Kind of a foreshadowing to now he's doing it for her. Right. So eventually she'll do it for somebody else. So that's why I was saying, I hope they do a sequel, you know, follow the girl and have Ewan McGregor be in the movie again. I'm pretty sure he will. Because, I Depending mean... Depending on how good the movie does. I think it's going to do... I mean, for all the people, all these people that likes, you know, I don't want to say horror film, but more like, how, how can we say these kind of movies? Supernatural? Yeah, this wasn't... Of course, this wasn't a slasher, this wasn't a typical, like, freaky, scary, you know, like those, like, that. like, horror and gore movies that these people make with blood and... Yeah, slasher. You know, like, oh, that's disgusting. I don't really like those movies, but if if it has more, like, a sense like these movies, I, I, I do. Yeah. You know, I, I won't mind watching, but... Yeah, it was really good. Like, movies that, the killing and all that stuff, I don't... Yeah. But at the end, yeah, that's the way that she was talking, and then he was talking to her, apologizing to her uh, for putting her in danger. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of, it was kind of sad. But I mean, he's gonna stick around. Yeah, and then uh, one thing I was thinking about at the end, whenever the girl went into the bathroom when the old lady was there to put her in the box, <laughs> like back whenever it showed him as a kid, Danny as a kid. Remember, my mom was like, you haven't talked since the incident since we left. And he went and Faye actually faced his fears after Carl had told him about the box and everything. And he went, come to find out that's what he did. He took, he put all his fears, all the people inside the boxes. And that was cool how at the end the girl did the same thing. Just walked in there, no fear. And, uh, yeah, basically just put them all away, locked them up. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. And I guess that's how we're going to lock this one up. See how I did that right there? <laughs> but any closing uh, statements, thoughts, anything? I uh, just, you know, like the mom, you know, keep looking at her like she's a freak, like weird. You know, like she's kind of scared of her. Mm -hmm. And and it's, it's, it's kind of nice the way that, she, you know, how the mom was staring at her, you know, and because she's like, were you talking to someone? Yeah. And she's like, no. You know, because she doesn't have the bonding with the mom, or not bonding, but more like the trust to tell her. Yeah. You know, but then you, you know, like she, she sits there and then kind of like, you know what? I'm just going to tell her. And she said, yes, I was talking to Dan. Talking to my friend Dan, yeah. Yeah, and she was just like, the mom was kind of like, looked at her kind of like, you're cuckoo. Well, I think she had seen enough to know that there's something going on, like. With the daughter? I mean, she's just not totally crazy. Like, she has something. But then, yeah, that's when the girl was, like, And then they're finally... talking about the, the, my mom, the mom, to, yeah. the dad. I'm sorry, the dad, too. That and he's he, okay. That he's okay. Yeah, she was finally able to be honest, and that's better. That she knows exactly what's going on, and there's no more secrets. Right. And, you know, he's like, he he's good. He's doing, he, dad is okay. Yeah. And then the mom is like, I'm glad to hear that, you know? Yeah. But, um, and then it's whenever she, the girl, uh, you know, she's going to go have dinner. And then it's when, when she tells the mom, just give me a minute, you know, because she can sense the old lady in the bathtub. Yeah, because I guess it's all so those funny people had how gone the, out. The old lady shows the hands and she's like, smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I guess the reason they did is because Dan had let all his go. So then they're coming after the girl, maybe. I think that's why. So she needs to go back and uh, box them, it, box them back up. Well, it's because she actually was in that in that hotel, yeah. and she went. She saw everybody because everybody got out, yeah. and then everybody was like hunting her, trying to get to her. Yeah, I think that's what they meant it as. Right. So, yeah. That's why, because you know, now since he let them out, now they're hunting her. See, he's dead. Yeah. But yeah. She needs to take care of all of them. But, I mean, we know Abra, she got this. Oh, she's got it, yeah. Yeah, she's like... And like they mentioned before, they were like, I don't know if there's any more of these people, but I, like I said, I think that's why they will do a sequel because they'll, they'll come out with some more people that we didn't see that are actual Shiner Eaters. Even Dan said that there's more people like that 
Hey everybody, and thank you if you made it to the end of our Dr. Sleep review. Unfortunately, in the process of downloading my videos, the ending got cut off, so I'm gonna do our outro. Uh, if you would, please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and share the video if you liked it, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.